Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, guys. Hope you're having a wonderful morning so far. It's uh, been great information. How good was Jeremy? Did you enjoy that? Hope you got lots of great um, information and took some great notes about that just to, to uh, get you pre prepared and positioned for 2023. So what I'd like to do now is go into a little bit about what Jeremy has spoken to in terms of the, the commodities that, um, that he mentioned, some of the major commodities. And as futures traders, we get the ability to trade those, those products on the, the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. So I'm going to show you how you can put that into your, your larger chart analysis, give you some processes based on our IDTA strategy, and you can use these systems uh, to be able to effectively look for some great trading opportunities. Now, a word of warning, I don't want you to go out now and, and start to look at every chart that I'm going to show you. Uh, this is just an overall snapshot just to really reinforce how powerful the tools that we use, like Fibonacci retracements and extensions, how powerful they are, not just on our five minute and our 15, 60 minute charts, but also on the wider scale as well. Uh, and understanding too that a lot of the, the bigger traders out there, the hedge funds, the large, the, the large money investment banks, the, the large buy and hold type um, entities, they do look at these larger charts. So there's some very key levels that you'll be able to find off these charts. So let's get into the presentation. Uh, and if you've just joined us, I will quickly run through our compliance slides because we do need to run through these. So I do need to let you know we are authorized by Beyond Capital Asset Management for the purposes of futures trading education. Understanding that we do use futures products which are uh, based on margins, so we are borrowing money from clearing houses to be able to trade these, these products. And with that margin, it does have the potential effect of magnifying profit and magnifying loss because of the leverage that we use. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with the futures markets, we will be talking a little bit about leverage throughout the day, but what leverage is, is just a multiplying factor to the, the commodity or to the markets we we trade so it just basically adds more um, more money to what we're doing okay so just to be mindful of that uh, so uh, leverage has a we use leverage it has a high degree of risk it can work for you it may not may work against you as well so be mindful that we do have winning trades we do have losing trades we do work on an overall profitability factor and also today's presentation was general information only, so I can't give you any personal uh, advice or financial planning advice or anything like this. this. is just general advice based on the information that we have from the charts. And also past performance of this product is not and should not be used as an indication of future performance and caution should be always exercised in assessing past performance. This product, like all other financial products, may not be suitable for all investors, uh, and they can be affected by uh, unpredictable events. Like Jeremy said, black swan events can have an effect on the future performance. So as I said, I'm going to extract some of the fundamentals that Jeremy went through today, and I'm going to give you a bit of a technical understanding using our Fibonacci levels and other IDTA trading fundamentals. We're going to talk about what are the basic fundamentals that you can always rely on as a trader, particularly trading our, our strategy. Uh, and how can we day trade these markets on the futures exchange? So at the end, I'll explain if you are interested in some of these products like oil or gold to be, to be um, you know, you may be interested in trading them uh, at some point in time. If you've got the time to be able to trade them, we don't want you to go out there and, and research all of these different products. There may be a product that that really strikes a chord with you that you go, you know what, I'm really interested in oil price. You know, I'm I actually, you know, why am I paying so much money at the, at the Bowser's all the time? Maybe it's something I can make money from the oil market rather than being, you know, paying for it all the time at the, at the fuel station. Let's take advantage of it in the charts. So I know one of our, our, um, our traders of the year for the last few years has, is a very much an avid oil trader. So he uses that as a, as a market as well. Not only the indexes that we primarily all trade. One, we, I'm sure most of you would trade either a, uh, an index like the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ or the micro versions of those or the FDAX or the micro versions of those. But some people, if you've got the time, uh, look for have a supplementary market like a, a gold market, oil market, or even a currency. 
Um, so I'll, I'll have a look at some of those markets today for you as well and show you how you can get involved in, in those if you're interested. Now a little bit, I'm going to talk about uh, just a little bit about what Jerry, Jeremy spoke about, but there is a currency war going on at the moment. Uh, and it's these G7 countries which are basically rely on the US dollar. Well, we all rely on the US dollar because it is the major uh, currency that we, we trade uh, for everything. So for instance, you know, 40% of all trade is invoiced against the US dollar. Uh, all buying and selling of crude oil is currently using the US dollar. Um, so the US dollar really keeps these G7 countries high, like France, Canada, um, who else is in the G7? Um, Great Britain, Japan, those countries are all reliant on the US dollar being high as well. I, I really like this chart because if you look at the peaks, um, like in 1984, 2002, 2022, particularly uh, 2002, 2022 was when we were seeing that there was, um, there was a threat of war coming into the equation. Uh, particularly 2002 was a, a build up into the um, Iraq war because of leading up to 2002, whether you can remember, there was the 911 bombing of the Twin Towers. Um, you know, there was a lot of anti terrorism, a lot of anti um, you know, ISIS, and all that sort of fear that was building. So there was a real sense that something was happening in terms of wars. And this is, is one thing that really builds the price of, of the US dollar as well. Not only interest rates as well has been, have been rising also. Um, if you look at this uh, weekly chart, the US dollar, you can see you know, 2002 was the last peak we had leading up until the, the war came out. And then 2003 to 2011 was the Iraq war, which went for you know, about eight years or so. And you can see the, U, the US dollar had, had a correction at that time. Uh, as Jeremy said, the US dollar has been the safe haven and you can see now that the US dollar is really at a, at a peak once again. And we're only just starting to see the US dollar having a little correction at the moment. Will the US dollar continue to go higher? Um, we'll, we'll wait and see. But one thing about the US dollar is that you can trade the US dollar on the CME against some of the other major currencies. Uh, the, one of the most major currencies you can trade is the 6E, which is the Euro, Euro versus the US dollar. So if you've been following the euro, if you're interested in, in that currency, if you're from Europe or if you, you travel through Europe a lot, you'd, be, you'd notice that the US dollar has, uh, the euro has significantly decreased. It is actually below $1. Um, I remember when I was in Europe a few years ago, um, you know, I was, it was about um, almost double uh, to the Australian dollar. So, you know, the US dollar has, uh, the euro has significantly decreased. So as traders, we can take advantage of those big price trends when they're occurring. So uh, if you're interested in that, I'll show you how you can get involved in, in that market. Now, this was a nice correlation for this year. And, uh, you know, we've talked about gold always being a safe haven in the markets. It's been quite the opposite with the, the war that's going on. Uh, in Ukraine and all these other things that are going on, the US dollar has significantly increased compared to gold. Like gold is down 13% from the start of the year. And um, the US dollar is actually against all other currencies, uh, which is called the US dollar index, uh, the DXY. You can see that is 19.51% higher. So there's, there's quite a, a, a really a disconnect. As, as Jeremy talked about this new normal that's occurring Generally, gold is a safe haven, and we're not seeing gold being that safe haven like it, it used to be. It, it tends to get, and I'll show you in a moment what happened during, the, um, uh, during the, the announcement of the Ukraine war was starting. We did get that ma massive spike, and we reached all-time highs, but then we've turned over, and we're, down to, uh, we're coming back down to some key Fibonacci levels, which I'll show you very, very soon. Another thing that's going on, and I don't know whether you attended last year's conference, but Dr. Dave Martin talked about this organization, which is called the BRICS, which is basically led by um, Putin and um, I, I always forget his name, but the, uh, the, the Chinese president, who basically has been voted in again pretty much all, all until the end of his life, basically. Uh, so 
he's in a pretty powerful condition, uh, position. So these two entities, plus a few other countries like India, Russia, South Africa, Brazil, are forming this entity called BRICS. Dave Martin spoke about it last year. This is a very interesting thing that's occurring in the, uh, in the whole macroeconomics. And this just adds more tension, a little bit more fear to, the, to what's going on between, you know, this war between the USA and Russia. Uh, but now you've got this organization or this, um, this uh, combination uh, of, of countries getting involved, which is very interesting and kind of exciting. So there's some of the, the, the leaders there, the Indian leader, the South African leader, uh, and the Brazilian leader there, just some of them. But, you know, this group is getting larger and larger and larger. Uh, you can see there that there's Argentina are looking like joining, Iran are coming in, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, which is the largest oil producer in the world, and then you've got also Turkey set to join as well. So they've got big visions, this organization, uh, by... Um, by uh, they're saying by 2030, uh, this is the IMF, predict that the, the GDP will increase by 31.5%. So they'll increase world's GDP. So they can add a lot of value, a lot of products and services to, to the world. Uh, and that'll increase, um, that'll increase by 50% by 2030, according to the IMF. So, and also another thing about the, the BRICS nations is that they add, they contribute to 40% of the world's population. So they have a massive impact on what's going on in the world. So what's happening with these, these, um, these commodities that uh, we talked about, gold and oil, in, in previous presentation? Well, as we know, gold has always been that currency of fear. Uh, it, it's always been promoted as a, a safe haven, particularly the doomsdays. You'll hear a lot of people saying right now, you know, in alternative uh, news stations like going out, stock up on oil, stock up, uh, sorry, stock up on gold and stock up on silver when there's, um, when there's um, uncertainty. Uh, and it's, it's, it's the, one of the oldest currencies, gold, uh, and it's a real safe haven. But we're not seeing that in, uh, really happening in, in the economy. Uh, however, the BRICS countries are the ones that are looking at gold. The, the BRICS countries are the ones that have been buying most of the gold around the world. And they, their, their plan, I don't know whether this is uh, true or not, but this has just been in, in, in alternative media sources have been mentioned, that the BRICS currency or this central currency that they will, they will, uh, they're looking to form will be the new reserve world currency. That's what they're, they're aiming for, or a comp competition at least to the US dollar and they will be backed by gold, which is, which is going to be very interesting. So this just adds another element to this volatility and, and fear and sort of currency war uh, between an ideological war between obviously the US states or, or the, 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 the US or the G7 based countries uh, and, the, um, and the BRICS countries. So let's have a look at gold. Um, this is on a weekly chart from 2009 to 2022. So 2009, for any people who are new to following the financial markets, the 2009 pretty much represented the bottom of the last cycle. So that was basically the end of the GFC and 2009 is where we started to see the market uh, surge again. And basically from 2009 upwards to around 2012, we saw a commodities peak. And that's what kept the Australian economy so buoyant in that time. Australia really didn't suffer the recession like many other countries. We didn't see the, the massive economic impacts around Australia. And that was because our, our economy was so strongly underpinned by commodities, iron ore, copper, you know, you, you name it, gas, et cetera. So we're seeing, we've seen that massive rise in uh, 2011 and then the gold, steadily dropped off. That's when the commodities cycle started to end. Uh, and then now we've seen the rebuild again of the um, of, of gold price. And you can see when we had the US recession fears coming in, we had COVID-19 coming in 2020, we saw an incredible increase in the gold price and we, we uh, actually cracked the all-time highs and we made all all-time highs back in uh, 2020. But since then, we've seen a, a, a consolidation of the price, a pullback. Then we had another run when there was the announcement of the Ukraine war uh, or that the, 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 the ongoing strife between 
um, Russia and Ukraine, and then we saw another spike. And a lot of gold bugs out there were expecting the gold price to continue to rise. However, it hasn't. It's just fallen over again. So it's really tough to predict what gold is doing, but we'll have a look in the charts and see where it's, where it's finding some support right now, which could be a great opportunity. So we'll go into that in a moment. Now we've talked about oil, it's always, and, and Jeremy's spoken a lot about the oil market, how correlated it is to the US dollar, uh, an energy crisis theme in the media that's, and, the, and the demand issues, we're seeing this increase in the price. Um, so as we know, it's a demand related uh, product. Interesting to see oil, we had that peak uh, in uh, 2007, right at the peak of the GFC. That was the last peak we had with a, it got to about $140 a barrel. We still haven't got to that price just yet. So I think oil is definitely something that's going to continue to increase over the next few years, particularly as we continue into this, we're, we're coming into what's called a, another commodities boom. Uh, that there will be an increase in commodities prices with inflation. As we've seen from Jeremy talking about the inflation increasing, these commodities are going to continue to increase as well. You can see how it's affected by recessions though. You can see it's, it is a, a product that is affected by, um, uh, by fear. And you can see the oil price actually went down to minus $40 at one period during the COVID-19 uh, cr uh, crisis in 2020. So early 2020, when, when the COVID um, strife hit, that was just everything that stopped, right? The world just stopped. You know, there was all the, all the uh, transportation, cruises, everything, all the airlines, everything. Everyone that uses big fuel costs uh, and a huge amount of fuel usage, everything just um, sunk and you can see it was affected. But look at the rally, look at the comeback it's had in that time. So if you could have picked up oil back in 2020 and held on, uh, I know one particular trader that has done very well trading oil over the last, um, uh, over the last two years, trading these, these bull runs, uh, you, you would have done extreme, extremely well. So now we're just in a bit of a, a pullback phase or, or what we call that retracement phase. So let's have a look at IDTA fundamentals and how can we use what we learned from the 101 course and from all our other teachings, how we can use this information. And if you're a new trader, um, how you can use some of our fundamentals when looking at the charts and not just looking at a five minute chart, but broadening your scope, having a, a larger perspective and seeing how uh, you can use these other charts to give you some ideas and you can see how powerful these, these levels work. So I'm going to look at the stair stepping and trend. Like what, is our, what is our key indicators we use for stair stepping and trends? We're going to be looking at Fibonacci. So you've got what we call retracements where we're measuring those pullbacks in the market. And then also we're going to look at extensions where you can start to look at certain levels of uh, targeting, but also you can find certain levels for great execution as well of Fibonacci extension levels. So they're very, very powerful tools. And then there's third thing is just particular patterns that are occurring in the market. So I really truly believe with trading, if you can just strip it down to some very simple concepts, and, and have a very ordered structure in your trading plan over these, these three foundations, you know, you, you'll feel a lot more confident, not as confused, and you'll really find your place on the trading chart. Because I, I truly believe trading is all, a part, all about knowing where you are. We use the charts as like a, a roadmap or an orientation to tell us where we are on the charts. So if you're not having a broader perspective and you don't have some simple structures and rules around your trading, you're going to really be trading blind. So let's go into these in a little bit more detail. So stair stepping and trend, all right? So you're aware the, the, the fundamental trend uh, tool that we use is called the MDI, all right? The market direction indicator. It's very powerful when referencing uh, support and resistance and obviously the, the primary direction of the market. You know, you really wanna be uh, trading either you really want to know who's in command of the market because there's two things with that. Um, there is eventually going to come a point in time where that trend is going to stop and turn over. And there's going to be what's called a counter trend where we can take advantage of the reversing fa factor. All right. So there's that element, right? Reversing the market is great because we can get generally very high risk to reward opportunities and 
that's really the, the, the whole reason for those reversal trades is you're trying to really minimize your risk and get a great reward. Uh, then there's trading with the trend, trading with the overall flow of the market. If you can catch the trend, I, ju I know in my own trading style, and I'll talk about that a bit more tomorrow, um, combining different charts all moving together gives you a more powerful trend. And the more power you have, the easier the market is going to flow and hopefully you'll get to your targets in a shorter amount of time. Also in the 101 course, we talk a lot about understanding leg counting principles. So the rule of three, it's a very powerful and simple rule that a lot of people seem to forget about as they go on in their trading journey. Uh, understanding the leg counting principles, how the markets uh, move in particular waves and, and legs can give you an idea also where you are for your, your trading opportunities. Um, obviously, you, uh, you can, with stair stepping, it's very important to be able to stair step properly because you can find uh, very good areas where the market is um, accumulating stop losses, where there's going to be obvious places for, for, for uh, um, failure. So step breaks and those types of trades are very powerful as well. Uh, if you go into the live trading room, you'll hear the moderators talking about step breaks. They're very, they can be very powerful areas of, of, um, of taking advantage of people and their stop losses in those positions as well. So being able to do stair stepping is a fundamental for taking advantage of those, uh, of those moves or, or of those areas in the market. Uh, and also too, being able to stair step and reading the market flow really helps you give a, um, um, a kinesthetic feel of the market. It can help you stop sometimes, particularly when your mind is just getting too busy, you've got too many thoughts going on in that moment. Just slow down, just get your drawing tool out and just do some leg counts, just do some stair stepping and it'll just slow you down and you can go, oh wow, okay, I'm in leg three right now on the five minute chart. All right, I'm coming up into a brick wall. All right, this may be a time where the market may start to slow down. I may not look to trade with a trend. I may look to start to look for reversing opportunities. So that's number one. Number two, Fibonacci is fantastic. Uh, it's a brilliant tool for establishing support and resistance. Uh, it is brilliant for also giving that wider orientation of where you are on the chart. And it just sets up probability frameworks all over the, all over the charts. The only thing with Fibonacci is that you can get too many and it can be very, very confusing. All right, so I'll give you a few tips um, with Fibonacci in, in a moment. Then also patterns, like looking for certain patterns in the market, uh, very, very powerful. Like one of the strongest patterns that people are trading, and I'd say a lot of IDTA traders are trading these patterns right now, are trading these static bar reversal trades or even double um, failure reversals uh, at, at significant areas. But these are patterns that are occurring generally around brick walls or key known psychological areas like Fibonacci levels. Very, very powerful trades and people are getting great success from being able to recognize these patterns. So that's, we were talking about a static bar reversal for some of the older traders that uh, may have, haven't been um, at an IDTA event quite some time or maybe have dropped out of trading and are just coming back into trading uh, for and, and getting a little, you know, wanting to get a bit of enthusiasm around their trading. This is one thing that's not in the 101 course, but it's something that we've added now to our, our teachings. Um, so the static bar reversal trades, there's, there's some rules there around the, the, the uh, static bar reversals. Um, so if you're not too sure what they are, I'll, have, I'll, I'll show you what they look like when we get into the charts. Um, oh, here's one uh, right here. This is an example of oil on a weekly chart. All right, so you, know, you can see the, those circled areas. You can see where you get uh, on the high there, you can see you get a dominant candle, that climactic or that really dark candle there, um, right up into the high area there around $120. And then you can see you get a little doji candle which has a very, very small body. So two or three times small, smaller body than the prior candle, which we would call a dominant candle, or if we had the efficiency indicator, it could be an efficient candle leading in, or there has been efficiency leading in. But you can see the reaction, even on a weekly chart, that these static bar, bar reversals can, can have. Um, 
And then you can see down on that bottom one as well, you can see the, the market failing at a, at a very strong Fibonacci level area there being the 76.4 and then doing a static bar reversal off there. So, you know, using these larger charts and looking at these patterns in combination with Fibonacci areas can give you a whole, a, a broader holistic view and can give you some great opportunities for, for price levels uh, to look for particular trades moving away from that. Also too, Fibonacci extensions, all right? Now, Fibonacci extensions can give you incredible um, levels for, for entry um, and on all charts. Uh, but the one to look, forward, look out for is the 25 extension price level. Watch carefully to see when price is swinging through uh, and showing some strength. And I'll, talk, I'll explain what swinging means when I get into the charts. And then the final one is the 50 extension. Be very mindful of the 50 extension. It is a really key level. It can cause a lot of congestion at the 50 extension. If it can break through the 50 extension, it's, it's a, a more of a powerful sign that this market has got more steam to either go up or go down. So whichever way the market is stair-stepping up or swinging up, if it can break through the 50 and finally get there, it can give you some um, can give you some power. So really focusing on the, the 50 and the 25, uh, if, you, if you're trading with that step is very, very powerful. You want to make sure that those 25 levels are being respected and the 25 level or the, or the 50 level is being broken down. Um, and then handy hints, all right? If you're new to Fibonacci's, you've never touched them. All right, once, once again, they're a very much a technical tool, all right? They're very much used by technical uh, chart traders and they can give you a wonderful insight into all charts because a lot of institutional traders are looking at these levels. Always start from a prominent reference point or a, pro, or a failure area, like a major high or a major low, all right? Because when the market's stair-stepping, you're gonna get a lot of stair steps. So to really, focus on what are the most important stair steps, work on the ones that are from the most major levels, all right? So those major highs or major lows. So it's generally the first stair step. Also pay attention to the stair step that changes the trend also. So you may have an, a stair step which initially has, has created the first stair step. You can still keep that one up on your chart, but also other stair steps that are occurring, primarily the one that changes the trend is, is, is very powerful. So that's the one I tend to, or well, those two are the ones I tend to respect more. But once again, with any of these tools, don't expect 100% reliability. They, 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 they have an incredible um, accuracy, uh, but they're not 100% reliable as a perfect price level. They're just, it's a vicinity or an area that you just wanna watch for, all right? So um, I'm gonna, I'm running out of time. So I'm gonna move over to my, um, Oh, I just want to show you this chart here. This is an example, if you can see on these two, uh, this is on a, a weekly chart, I believe, but you can see on this particular chart here, you can see how the, 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 what we're looking for, if the first stair step down is a short trade or a short direction, or you'd be looking to, you know, looking for good trades short, what we're looking for is that market to, to come back to the 25 and fail. If it can fail at the 25 and move away from the 25, then you're looking for it to see how it behaves around the 50. If it can get through the 50 with a lot more ease, then the market can, can move away. So in that first example, you can see the market moves very strongly. Once it gets through the 50, it actually just starts hammering down. The second one where it's, tr where it's stair stepping back up, it looks like we've changed the trend. You can see once again, there's two days of consolidation at that 50 extension. But you can see when it comes back to the 25% extension, it's, it comes back and tests it, but it tends to bounce off that level. So I look at that 25% level as to see if the market is holding above that 25. And you can get some nice movement when the market's moving off that 25% off that extension, you can get some nice movement away. Unfortunately, I've got a lot of charts to show, which I, I'm going to miss out and I'm not going to get to. But I just want to show you just an example of, of how you can use all these together. Um, uh, oh, we got the charts. Okay, brilliant. So this is an example of oil. And if you look here, I'll just go to my... Um, 
pointer, you can see here, this is a stair step occurring here. So I, drawn, I drew the first Fibonacci down from that significant high point. And what I'm talking about with the 25%, look at the 25, see how the market comes back to the 25, all right, and then it, it tends to hold off that level, all right? Then the next level we're looking at is at the 20, at the 50, and you can see we got below, we pushed down through the 50, but then we went back and tested the 50. But you can see the 50 acted there as a level of resistance to the high side. So it's just interesting to watch the play between the 25 and the 50. Uh, as, as areas of support and resistance. Um, anyway, you can see we failed down here at the 161.8. For anyone who knows Fibonacci extension levels, we know the 161.8 is a very, very powerful level. You can see we've got what's called a static bar reversal occurring right down there on this weekly chart. And then as the market moves away, look what, what's happening on the weekly chart. It moves up, it comes back down. And you can see we hit the 50%, all right? But watch, if I zoom in here, watch where the market came back to. Came back to the 25%. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys, my charts aren't working. All right. Um, I'm, I'm pretty. I've, I think I've almost completed my session, guys. Um, what's that? I've got five minutes. Okay. So, are there any questions at all coming through regarding the the use of these these tools? I. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to. I'll show you this right now because there's a key Fibonacci level I, I can show you. But yes, I think I think we've found we're we're at a, I think a 61.8 Fibonacci level that we're bouncing off. So I do think gold will will go up. We, we seems to be finding a nice Fibonacci level on these larger charts that we're supporting. So I would just watch these Fibonacci levels for for key support and resistance. Um, so just on that question. Let me just go into the gold and I'll show you. Um, so if you can see here, this is the weekly chart. You can see we're down at the, this 61.8 right now. So we've had three touches of that 61.8. So that's a very powerful level. So I would be watching that. If you are looking to, to buy some gold, I'd be watching that level to see if it can hold. Um, if, if it breaks that level there, generally we, we keep going down. Uh, and then obviously the, we've got the 76 down here and we've got the 261.8 um, Fibonacci extension down here. So one thing to point out is this is a weekly chart. Once again, if you're looking at leg counting on this gold chart, we've, we've been legging down four, we're in the fifth leg down. So we've, we've, we've had five major stair steps down. So that is quite extended to the downside. So I do think this 61.8 level Personally, I think it's, it, it's, I'd be looking to, to, uh, to buy those types of commodities. Personally, I'd be, I'd be doing that around these levels right now. Um, it, I think it's a, a really good opportunity. Um, what I wanted to say just before I go, just um, talking about this 25% level. And remember guys, you can use this on your 15, 60, five minute combinations. It, these same principles that I'm showing you on these weekly charts, larger charts, it's the same principles that you can use. So if, if we look here on this um, weekly move down, you can see how the market, the, f the first move down, you can see we got stuck at the 25 extension. All right, so you can see how the market moved away. We went down, we had a big spike down, and look where we found resistance to the high side up at that 50% extension. So you'll see this happening a lot on a lot of the charts. They keep repeating these same types of patterns um, and uh, they can just be very important price levels to look for and just to watch how the market reacts from these, these levels. And then now where we're at right now is, I believe the market had a very strong move last night. Um, particularly, I'll, I'll have a look at the, if I go into the daily 
the daily move. So you can see that's the weekly Fibonacci over the top. You can see we hit the 50% the here. All right, and look where we came back to. We came back to the 25% to the tick. We found some support off it, and then the market went back up and tested the 25, uh, sorry, the 50 right here. And now the market broke last night. So we had a very strong movement in the, in the uh, commodities last night, or particularly in this oil commodity. But the thing is, you can, there's, there's many ways that you can access these, these, um, these markets, um, which I'll, what I'll do is I've got a lot more notes here that I, I'll put in our resources folder. Uh, so if you are interested in trading any of these products, like any of the commodities or any of the, the currency products, I can show you, I've got some no, key notes about, you know, when are the better times to trade those commodities? What are the ticker codes? What are the, the tick values? And just some key little fundamentals and uh, technicals about those particular markets, if it's something of interest to you. Super Cam. Thank you.